Hi, I'm Cindy Gay, and today's lesson is about why I don't use rug binding tape. Now, what is rug binding tape? Oops. This is an example of rug binding tape. It's like a twill tape. Um, it's stiff when you first get it. You're going to need to do some processing. It's used to cover raw edges, and I'm going to explain to you why I don't use this except for sometimes, okay? So part of it is color matching. Now, one of the reasons I don't like rug tape. Do you need red and green and blue? And you get the idea, right? So what I use are really basically just these guys. This is what I have in the studio. If a student asks me for rug tape, these are the three colors that I have. That's it. Um, short, simple, this should work for almost every rug. Now, the reason the color is not important is because you need to process this tape. Okay, this tape is not meant necessarily to be used the way we're going to be intending to use it. Okay, which is on the floor, maybe in front of the door, where it gets a little bit wet on the corners, that kind of thing. So what you want to do, even if you never intend for your rug to get wet, right? It could get wet. So what you need to do is to process this so that there's no excess dye in this rug tape. Because if it comes out, guess where it's going? It's going on your rug. So we want to get out any excess dye. We want to shrink it so that it is down to its smallest possible self and then we're going to process it or and and then we'll process it further to add to the rug so to get the dye, excess dye out and to shrink it what you do is you put it in a pot and make sure you cut off plenty cut off enough to go all the way around your rug plus a good chunk remember it's going to shrink and you want enough extra to work with. You don't want to get to the end and find out that you were two inches too short, right? What I will typically do is I will just pull off many, many yards and do a whole bunch at once so I don't have to do it for every single rug, right? And you put it in a pot, you fill it up with water, and you put a nice squirt of soap in it. Soap turns the water alkaline. Alkaline water makes the dye come out of the fabric, right? Once that water starts to turn, pour it off, fill it up again, a little bit more soap. I do this until I'm convinced that most of the dye is out of the rug tape. Now, it'll often change colors, okay? So you might end up with a black that's going to end up a bit more charcoal than black, okay? So that's why I say don't mess with trying to match a color because you'll drive yourself crazy. So if you wanna go with the dark, do a dark, but know that it's gonna lighten up some as you're processing it. So now we have this wet, bled out, shrunk down mess of rug tape, and you're gonna to have to get it dry somehow. I usually hang it over the shower curtain. Now, if you haven't done a good job of bleeding out the dye. It could stain your shower pole, it could sh stain down below. So you wanna make sure you get out most of that dye, right? Once you do that, then once it's dry, you're gonna have to iron it, okay? Once it's ironed, then you can start the finishing. So you're kinda of getting an idea of why I don't like rug binding tape, right? Okay, so, where can you get rug binding tape? Well, you can get it, most rug hooking stores will have it. I have a little bit in stock. Um, I don't actively sell it, it's not listed on my website. Um, but if you want some, you can get in touch with me. Um, you can get some at Joann's. You just wanna make sure that you're not getting the super, super thick stuff, okay? Because then what you're doing is you're adding bulk to the outside edge. So. One alternative that some people will use will be wool. And this is a strip of wool. Um, it used to be a roll this big. And then I cut some strips off of it and used it. So now it's a thinner one.
But this is a piece of wool that's 45 feet long, which is how long a bolt of wool is. Um, and I'll use this when I need a really long piece of wool. So you could use this as rug binding tape, but it's thicker than rug binding tape. So it's gonna add an extra thickness to the outside edge and even more thickness to the corners. So, and that's really not where you want it because you don't want your rug to become a trip hazard by having raised edges, right? So I don't recommend doing that. You can if you want. What I use instead is I use a fold forward finish and I've talked about this on this channel extensively. This is the back of the fold forward finish. It's nice and clean. There's nothing extra there. There's nothing that I had to shrink down. There's nothing that I have to iron. There's nothing that I have to worry about bleeding onto it. There's nothing to create an extra thickness at that outside edge. For those reasons, this is really what is really good about that kind of stuff is putting, um, not putting any kind of binding there. Um, oh, work instructions for the fold forward finish. You can get those at cindygayrugcooking.com forward slash FF. I intended on putting a link down in the show notes. Don't remember if I did, but I'll check it after this video. If you're a member of the rug cooking journey, let me show you where you can go to find that instead. Um, oh, I had this all set up. There we go. Here is howtorugcook.com. I'm going to click on the dashboard. And you can always tell if you're logged in because it says log out up there. If it says log in, you still need to log in. You'll be welcomed by your name if you're logged in. And just as a quick tip, this is how you get to all my special events. So tomorrow for the hook-in, you simply click there. That's all you need. For the wool sale on Saturday, click there. That's all you need. For these live lessons, click here. It takes you to my YouTube channel. Makes things so much easier. You want to see what's coming up in the calendar? Click there. It'll show you the calendar. Um, you don't even have to be logged in to see this particular part. It is below the login form on the page. You just got to scroll down and go get it. Um, but if you're logged in, some extra special stuff goes on behind the scenes. So I hope you will log in. If you're VIP eligible, here's where that is. You want to click on that and lock in the lowest possible price for the rug cooking journey. You can only get this after about a year's worth of membership. But where I'm going to is down here in the basics. So when I go into the basics course, I'm gonna flip down here to how to finish and then finishing. There's a video here that'll walk you through um, some of the information. I got a link back to my webpage, which will take you to the best article that I have. And I have, for members only, I have this wonderful PDF that goes on four days. It teaches you everything you need to know about doing this particular finish. All the ins and outs, including how to calculate how much yarn you're gonna need, it gives you all the ins and outs of how to do the fold forward finish. So, and that's available to any member of the rug hooking journey. Let me go back to here. Um, now, why would I use rug tape? There are a few rare instances when I use rug tape. Now, the only time you need it is to cover a raw edge, okay? So if you're folding your backing to the back, you're gonna need a piece of rug tape to hide it, okay? The problem is it's adding thickness to the edge of the rug. That's why I like the fold forward. There's nothing extra that you have to cover up on the back. Um, there was a point for, 
something else to do there. Oh, just to cover the edge. You could also do something as simple as take your backing to the back and sew it down and not even use rug tape. If you want to use rug tape, this is where you would sew it on to cover that raw edge. But where I do use that method is for stair risers. Now, the reason for that is I am incredibly limited in the amount of space I have, okay? So that stair is only so tall and I don't want to take up design space with this whipping, okay? So I fold it all to the back. Here's the finish. I fold it to the back and then put a shrunk down piece of rug tape on it and I whip that little tiny bit that's left. So this is what it looks like. See that little bit, let me get it focused on there. That little bit of um, whipping is right there along the edge and then the rug tape covers the rest of the backing that goes to the back. Now, it's not my favorite finish to do because it takes a lot of time and it also um, prevents, or it also causes rot at the very edge. But this is a small piece, so it doesn't really matter. What's more important is getting all that design space and doing that. So if you wanna use rug tape, you can, but make sure that, make sure that you um, shrink it down and make sure it's ready to live permanently on your rug. Don't skip the processing step. Okay, I noticed that there really weren't any questions, but Donna had one. She says, why do you start at 408 or so? Is it, or is it my iPhone? I start usually a four, few minutes before four o'clock. Um, I have a countdown timer that goes when I'm still preparing. Um, it depends on how prepared I am that day. If I'm well prepared, I'll pop on and I'll read everybody that said hello. Um, because you went to the trouble to type in a comment, I'm gonna make sure I read them, right? Um, but I do get started right around four o'clock, so it's definitely not 4.08. When that popped up, I think it was 4.09 on my count on my clock and it was way into the actual lesson. Debbie says, why do you use on the IKEA stool? Don't know what that means. Debbie, you got to give me a little bit more information. Um, okay. Oh, why do I use rug tape on the Ikea stool? That might be what you're asking. And the one that I did it on, it was because I cut it too short and I couldn't do a full forward. Yeah. Um, but I like to do the cording and fold back because that particular finish tends to curl under. And on a footstool slip cover, it curling under is just perfect. So that's why I use it for that. Deb is saying, if you have a rug with tape, can it be taken off and do fold forward if there is enough backing? Probably. Um, the first test that I would look through, Deb, is to check to see if it's burlap. If it's burlap and if you don't plan on doing a full blown linen underlining, and I've got some lessons, I got a lesson that I'm putting together on how to do that. Um, if you're not doing that, don't touch it. Um, if it's something that maybe you've done recently, you're not crazy about it, and you know you've got an inch and a quarter, and particularly if it's on rug warp, knock yourself out. Absolutely, you could do that. Um, Sally says, how do you deal with the rounded corner of the pencil pouch when I use a fold forward method? You just fold it forward. You kind of, you, you have to sort of like gather it in a little bit and you just sort of ease it in and it goes right where it needs to go. It lays pretty darn nice. 
Um, it's, it's not an issue. But it's, it's just a matter of, you know, you fold it forward and you just kind of gather it a little bit. You know, and st your basting will get closer and closer together than they will on the straight at straightaways because on the straightaways you don't need much. But when you're going around that corner, you need to put your stitching a little bit closer and just tack it all down. And then do the first fold and then go back and then do the second fold. Okay. Well, I think I think I I think I'm tapped out on questions, guys. So, um, if you are a member of the rug cooking journey, pop on over to the dashboard or click on the email that I sent you just a little bit ago, and head on over to the Zoom room as soon as I end this, and we'll be talking more, and we'll be able to talk back and forth, which is a lot better. Um. Vera is saying, if we do use rug tape, is there a rule of thumb on matching colors? Background or main color of rug, does it matter? No. Um, one of my favorite artists, Rochelle LeBlanc, has a very fancy, very wide um, rug tape that is woven specifically for her, and it's got multiple colors in it. So you can do whatever you want. It's the back of your rug. And Derek says, we're a quiet bunch today. And that you are. So I'm going to go ahead and end it here. And if you're a member of the Rug Cooking Journey, it's not 530 yet. But let's go hang out. And um, I'll definitely stay past 530 because that's when I advertised that it would start. But let's get a, a head start on that, right? So. See you over there, everybody. Bye for now.